If you are looking at your Google Analytics and you see that your bounce rate is 50, 60, 65, 70%, one of the things that you might want to look at is the speed of your website. Maybe people are leaving the website because it's taking too long to load. You've done that. You've left the website quickly because it was just taking too long to load. You need to expect that the people who are coming to your church website, they're going to leave if it's taking too long to load. Well, hey there. Welcome to the Missional Marketing Podcast. My name is Bart Blair. I'm joined as always by Jason Hamrock, the CEO of Missional Marketing. And uh, we want to spend a little bit of time coaching you today. Jason, we coach. That's what we do here at Missional Marketing, coaching. That's what we love to do. Uh, we've all been serving in churches, and now we're on this side where we get to serve churches instead of working in a church. And um, today we want to go deeper into how does Google look at your website? And what are some three things that you need to focus on when it comes to your website that uh, we want to speak into? Yeah, we used to we used to travel around the country and do these lunch and learn events with churches all yeah. around the U.S., and one of the things that we spent time doing in these lunch and learn events was helping churches understand what Google loves in a website. And sort of I, I sort of unpacked a few things that we talk about in those lunch and learn events and thought, let's share this as a podcast episode for all those people that never got to attend a luncheon. Now, maybe one of these days we'll have luncheons again and we'll buy some lunch for some people. But we don't, we're not doing that today. So if you've got a lunch, eat your lunch while you watch or listen to this episode. So, all right, here we go. Three things that Google loves in your church website. We're going to start by talking about website security. We're going to talk about speed of a website, and we're going to talk about crawlability on a website. But let's mm -hmm. stop on that first one, which can sometimes be a website stopper, and that is security. Jason, why is security important on a church website? Well, to speak the obvious, it's you, you don't want your website being hacked, obviously, right? So everybody understands that. But um, actually, what has to happen these days is you have to have an HTTPS, a secure website, in order for uh, anybody to get to your website. Otherwise, there could be, you know, browsers will say, hey, this is an unsecure website. You never want to see that happen. Or Google will not deliver ads, right? And, and Facebook, they won't deliver ads if your website is unsecure. So it's as simple as connecting with the, the usually the, the, the where you have your website domain, right? It could be GoDad, your uh, uh, you know, website like that. But you want to buy an SSL certificate an SSL certificate. And it's a it's kind of an annual thing. You kind of have to pay for it. Uh, but uh, av having that will put that little nice green padlock on your uh, next to your domain when somebody goes to your website. And so I, I often look at churches' websites and I recognize it's it's either it's either secure, it's not secure. In fact, sometimes though, I'll look to see the homepage is secure, but you go into some of the sub pages and they're not secure. And so you got to make sure that that SSL certificate is authenticated and it's throughout your entire website. Um, we have yeah. a lot more to offer on that, but that's that's something that's really really important. Yeah, I, I'm I, I'm pretty sure we have a we have a blog post on our website uh, related to security for websites. So I'll make sure that that's linked in the show notes. But you know, it's really frustrating when you're surfing the internet and you see something that looks like a website you want to click on, and you go to click on it, and all of a sudden your browser, whether you're in Chrome or or Firefox or whatever you're using, says, "No, you're not going there. This website <laughs> is not secure." We do not want that happening to people who are trying to get to your church website. Right. And from a surface level, your website might look secure because the homepage is secure, but sometimes you might have content on your website that isn't secure on sub pages or other parts of the website. And so you need to make sure that you have an SSL certificate installed and that it's installed properly so that all of your uh, content is secure on your website. It yep. not only gives Google confidence that your website is secure, but it gives you confidence in knowing that someone hasn't embedded malicious content on your website and you're not spreading a virus. We don't want you spreading viruses. So I can't believe I brought up viruses. We're not going to go any further down the virus conversation. Let's move on to the second okay. thing that Google loves in a church website, and that is speed. Jason, why is speed no. important to Google? Well, obviously you don't want a slow website. Uh, and there's a number of ways that your site can be slowed down. Uh, for example, if, if you go to any kind of a, a, a you know, your, your church homepage and it starts to load, there's a time to load thing that takes place, right? And so most websites, you want them loading in about two and a half, three seconds. Now, if it's a little bit more than that, okay, but you really want to be in that optimum time of two to three seconds. Why that's important is a, a couple of reasons. Number one, Google's watching. They're always watching. And so they look to see how fast a website 
loads and you want to be responsible um, and make sure your website, your church website loads fast, right? You have to understand though, that people are using different, you know, they're using their phone, tablet, their, their desktop to actually go to your website. And so their connections could determine how fast it loads on their, on, you know, based on, on their, their internet speed. But you want to make sure you do your, your side of the equation of you have a fast load, load speed. Google watches that. It actually does have something to do with your, the authority, rank authority of your website when your website is loading quickly. And, and it, it really plays pretty well in there. Now, there's some things that you can look at, to say, how do I make it faster? Well, images. Often, sometimes you load up a massive image on your website and it's just this little thumbnail, but it's a massive image in the library. That takes a long time for that to have to download, right? So you want to make sure your, your images are optimized. That's usually the biggest one I see. Another one is video. Often you'll load up a big old honk and long video and you've not really taken the time uh, to optimize that video for as, you know, as condensed as possible. There's another one though. Sometimes it's, it's, it's where your website is hosted. Usually you're hosting on what's called a shared server. A shared server is basically a server that's got lots of different websites. And if there's a website out on that shared server that pulls down a lot of data, it could, it could affect your load speed because your files, your, your website is sitting on a server shared with a whole bunch of other websites. So we often will look at that. And sometimes what, when, whenever we get hired to help speed up a website, that's kind of one first thing we look at is, we want to investigate the server that it's on and see if we can get into a quicker server. Um, sometimes that does alleviate the problem. But those are in a kind of a nutshell. That is a, um, kind of covers the the speed aspect, and you just want to make sure you have a fast loading website. Yeah, I just want to add a couple of comments to that. One is that Google is looking at the the speed of your website, but the speed of your website impacts the user experience. It's You're going to have a higher bounce rate on your website if you have a slow loading website. And a bounce rate, a bounce rate is the percentage of people who leave your website without engaging any of the content. And you want to have a low bounce rate, a low percentage of visitors leave without doing anything. Uh, so if you are looking at your Google Analytics and you see that your bounce rate is 50, 60, 65, 70%. One of the things that you might want to look at is the speed of your website. Maybe people are leaving the website because it's taking too long to load. You've done that. You've left the website quickly because it was just taking too long to load. You need to expect that the people who are coming to your church website, they're going to leave if it's taking too long to load. Uh, one of the other things that I want to comment on is video. You talked about video. It's very, very common these days for churches to have kind of these buzz reel videos playing in the background of the homepage. I want to say this, and I know this is going to probably hurt some feelings, and you can send, you, you, I'll, I'll give you my email if you want to send me hate email, but here's the deal. That buzz reel on the homepage of your video means a whole lot more to you than it does the users who are coming to your website. They're mm -hmm. not going to sit there on the homepage and stare and watch a video playing in the background. They're looking for buttons to click and content to consume, and that is not consumable content. Yet it is one of the primary reasons that I see website homepage speeds being subpar, being too slow. That homepage buzz reel video just takes too long to load. So if someone's on mobile, you know, and they're using their cellular data, uh, the last thing that they want to do is have to load your big honking video and it's going to slow that load down. So yeah. I just challenge you to consider the cost of the, the user experience if you think it's enhancing the user experience and you can really be convinced of that, then leave that buzz reel up there. Otherwise, I think a static image, a really low compressed, you know, high quality image that communicates something that gives that emotional impact that you're looking for is just as impactful as that video buzz reel. Yeah. It looks cool, but it may not necessarily be working in your favor. Hi, Bart Blair here. I'm the producer of Missional Marketing's Church Growth Interviews podcast. On behalf of our entire team, we really appreciate you tuning in. Let me ask you a question. If you're a church leader or a church communications professional, do you know how Google sees your church website? In other words, if people in your community were to Google churches near me or best church in my city or good church nearby, do you know where your church website would show up in those search results? At the top maybe, or somewhere in the middle? 
or somewhere on page four. You know, there's a common misunderstanding that if we simply build a great website and we launch it, that Google will somehow work its magic and people will find us online. But there's a bit more art and science to making sure that your church website shows up in the top of those search results. And that science is called local SEO or local search engine optimization. And at Missional Marketing, local SEO is one of the core services that we provide for churches all across the United States and Canada. And we'd love to help you. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, click to our website at missionalmarketing.com and follow the link at the top of the page that says Church SEO. You can request a free local SEO report to see how your church is showing up in Google these days. And you can schedule an appointment to talk with Jason or with me or with one of our other digital strategists to help you decide whether or not a local SEO boost is right for your church. Hey, again, we appreciate you tuning into our podcast and we look forward to the opportunity to serving you in your church and reaching more people for Jesus. Now, back to the show. Okay, yep. so we talked about security. We talked about speed. And the third thing that we want to land on is kind of the biggest of them all. And that is what we call crawlability. Jason, explain what crawlability is and explain why it's important to Google. Sure. Uh, so one thing I want to talk about is this phrase UX. You've all understood user experience. So UX is, is, is user experience. And the user experience on your website is how a person engages with your website. The images we just talked about, the video, the content, the navigation, all that stuff, right? It's really important from user experience. Crawlability is not about user experience. <laughs> Crawlability is how Google looks at your website. And what they're looking for is really uh, pretty important to understand. They're looking at different things that you want to make sure you are locked into what Google sees so that your website shows up organically. Let me give an example. Um, I'll often go to a church website and they'll, they'll have a care page. Okay. They have a, they'll have a care. So you click on care, the care ministry, and there's like five or six or seven different things that the care ministry does. They might have celebrate recovery, grief share, um, they'll have like some kind of a divorce, you know, support group or something like that. And they have other different things that they do. Well, when Google is crawling that web site, when we talk about crawlability, we're talking about all the data behind that. We're talking about the URL structure. We're talking about the meta description. We're talking about the content on the website. We're, we're looking at things that when Google crawls this site, are we convincing Google that we're an authority in this subject matter and will we show up organically? And so we're looking at all the different errors, the different warnings, even the notices that are on your website. You can run a report, we'll run a report for you, and it'll tell you exactly all the different issues you have with your website when it comes to things like meta descriptions. I often will find churches don't add a meta description. If they have a meta description, it's pulled from whatever content that is on that website, which may not be what you want, right? I often find that that the URLs are kind of mumble, you know, they just like, they'll have like their, their domain forward slash and a whole bunch of characters afterwards. That doesn't help Google at all. And so whenever I'm talking to a church, I'm not talking about the user experience, although that's a great deep conversation. I'm talking about how does Google crawl your website and it doesn't make sense to Google. If it doesn't make sense to Google, you're in trouble. And so we look at, again, I'll just, I'll go back there. We look at the URL. What's that string look like? We look at like the meta descriptions. You can see what that looks like. The title of the page, H1 headings, um, H2 headings. We look at images and how are images named? Are they named appropriately? We look at the content. Google doesn't care anymore about keywords. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, you're, you are you in the, back in the old days before Google really released new algorithms, you could stuff keywords <laughs> into, into your web page, right? So you'd have like 500 keywords and Google's like, oh my goodness, they are, this is, they're really relevant because they have all these keywords. Well, they just see right through that. So keywords are irrelevant. What Google focuses on is content, the text that Google can crawl on the page. Keep in mind, Google cannot crawl PDFs. They can't crawl videos. They don't care about image. They don't care about like colors. And, you know, if you have a picture up there with words on that picture, that's not crawlable. They have to crawl content that they can actually, you can actually, if you can highlight the, the content on your page, Google's crawling that. And so crawlability has about making sure your, 
your website's functioning correctly. It looks good to Google. There's no errors. There's no warnings. The notices are minimal. And you've got a really sound website. You got to start there. And then from there, you can start uh, getting into what, what I call the content of the site and actually the navigation of the site. That's search engine optimization, optimizing your website. But you got to start with the crawlability and fixing the foundation first. Yeah, a lot of people who are watching this podcast or listening to this podcast are probably familiar with like the Yoast uh, plugin if they use a WordPress, WordPress website. And 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 Yoast will actually give you some good pointers in terms of the readability, crawlability of your website, but it only scratches the surface. There's actually a whole lot more to crawlability than just the little, you know, red light, yellow light, green light that you get in Yoast. Um yeah. You talked about user experience, and I would say that a lot of web developers, especially in the church world, have defaulted to a less is more mindset that will have a care page, and that care page will have all of the information about the four or five different care ministries that we have in our church, but we have only like one or two descriptive sentences yeah. for each of those care ministries. Well, Google will crawl that page and index that page, but because there's so little content on the page, and it's such a wide variety of content, Google doesn't see that page as authoritative on any particular topic. So if you have a care ministry and you have four or five different um, ministries that fall within that care ministry, such as, you know, divorce care or um, a, a grief financial share peace or university, or grief share, whatever, yeah. you should actually have separate pages for each of those ministries with more content extrapolated don't be afraid to use words. It's true. Most people will not read most of the content that you have on the website, but Google does. And that's yep. how Google determines whether or not your pages are actually authoritative on the topic uh, that people are searching for. So crawlability is huge. Another thing that the crawlability, you talked about uh, errors and warnings, um, broken links, yeah. Uh, pages yeah. that are orphaned pages that don't have any way to get to them. Uh, we can run a crawlability report for your church website and kind of show you what all of those errors and warnings and, and red flags are. Uh, so you can determine whether or not, you know, you need to do an aggressive deep dive on fixing that stuff to make your website healthier. Yeah. You have backlinks and all kinds of stuff. A couple of tool tips for you guys. If you guys use Chrome, Okay, because I like using Chrome as a browser. I, I got a plugin called SEO Meta in one click. SEO Meta in one click. Find that plugin, download it, and then pin it to your, your little bar up there at the top. And I'll tell you, when you're on your website, you look, you click on that, and it'll give you kind of a snapshot of sort of the highlights that we just talked about. It'll tell you your title, the meta description, your H1s, H2s, H3s. It gets into images. It's kind of a cool little plugin. Here's another little tidbit. Okay. Most churches build their website, their church website, and it's basically a brochure about their church, which is fine for your people. Because if I'm looking for like, you know, grief share, I'm going to go to care and there's all the listings. Fine. But as Bart just said, you don't want to do that to reach people outside your church. I'll give you a perfect example. If you like, if, if you guys, we like to cook at our house. And so often we'll look up recipes, right? And so if you ever look up a recipe, like, you know, we made a pasta with broccoli and sausage the other day, right? So if you Google that, okay, and you see like the first recipe, you click on that recipe, like you click on that link, it's not going to give you the recipe, is it? No. It's going to give you a <laughs> long page and you got to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll to get to the recipe. Why? Why don't they just put the recipe? That's it. Because that it won't, it will never show up number one in Google. Google, the reason that if you look at that page, it's talking about the best pasta, the best broccoli, the best sausage, how to use the ingredients. It's got all this stuff before it even gets to the recipe. That's intentional. That's why they're number one. And, right. and you have to think the same way. Did I read all that content? No. I looked at some images going, yep, that's the recipe I want. Ooh, that looks really, really tasty. I'm scrolling straight down to the recipe and it doesn't bother me. I, I recognize that's how the, that's just the way it is. Your website has to be the same way when it comes to like grief share. Don't just have like, we have grief share 7 p.m. on Wednesdays in room B152. <laughs> that's never going to show up anywhere. However, there's a ton of people searching for like how to recover from grief or how to help a loved one through a grieving time. 
a, a grieving period, right? You've got to have content that actually, you know, shares what you can do to overcome grief. Have some scripture, have some tips, have a video, have some images in there. Give, you know, links to download this, right? That is optimizing the page. And that's a little bit deeper than crawlability. We just sort of sunk into some SEO practices you should do, but it really does start with crawlability to see, is your website even functioning correctly when it comes to Google? You're only slightly about passionate about this. We can tell. A little bit. Um, just, yeah, just a little bit. Um, that's pretty good. I, I, we're going to wrap things up. That was a pretty good conversation. Three things that your church website needs to knock out of the park in order to make Google happy. You need to have a secure website. You need to have a fast website and you need to have a website that is crawlable. And if you have any questions about any of those things or would like us to run a report for your website uh, and meet up with you and have a conversation about what we might be able to do for you, what, what you might be able to do on your own, we're happy to do that. Uh, just go to our website, missionalmarketing.com. You can click the contact us link and you can schedule an appointment to meet with Jason or me or one of our other coaches. Uh, we wanna thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Missional Marketing Podcast. We know that um, you got a lot of podcasts that you can choose to listen to. And the fact that you hang out with Jason and me, we consider it an honor. Uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed, make sure that you subscribe, whether you're on our YouTube channel or uh, whatever your favorite podcasting app might be. And if you haven't left us a rating or review, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, that helps more people uh, find the podcast. And it also lets us know if we're providing the kind of content that you find helpful. So thanks again for tuning in to the show today. And until next time, I'm Bart and that's Jason and we're Missional right. Marketing. Thanks again. Thank you.